Hi, and welcome to the California Builder Services Fully Funded Reserves and Future Cost Tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about how reserves are funded, how you get that percent funding uh, on a per component item, and then we'll add it all up at the end and do the whole HOA. We're also going to find out how to compute and find out what the future cost is of every component that's in your reserve study. Uh, today we're using Excel. Uh, there's a lot of really powerful math tools in Excel and it makes, a, makes it a lot easier for us. So in this hypothetical HOA here, I put that we have four components. We have painting, landscaping, asphalt seal, and asphalt overlay. Uh, just using round, round made up numbers that painting is 5,000, landscaping is 7,000, asphalt seal coat at 20 and asphalt overlay at 100. Each one of these components has a useful life um, associated with it. That's how long between uh, applications. So every seven years, you're going to have to paint. Every five years, you may have to redo some landscaping. Uh, five years for asphalt seal and 30 years for asphalt overlay. And these items were all completed at different intervals. So one year ago, the painting was done, which means that you have six years remaining life on that painting and so on throughout the other components. So how do we find out how, uh, what the 100% funding would be per component? How do we find out how much money we need to have today so that to tell if we're on track or not to make those, uh, those repairs when they come due? And in Excel, it makes it really easy. I have the formula down here. It says the fully funded amount is equal to age divided by useful life times the present value. So the present value is going to be your current cost. We know how much painting costs today. We don't know how much it'll be six years from now exactly. We have a, an estimate with, uh, with inflation rates, but we know how much it is today. So let's Let's do that fully funded amount. So we're gonna say equals the age divided by the useful life. So the age of the paint, if it has a useful life of seven, remaining life of one, or I'm sorry, remaining life of six, it has an age of one. So we're gonna open that parentheses, which is gonna be one divided by the useful life. In this case, it's seven. So seven, close that, uh, multiplied by, the current cost of 5,000, okay? Hit enter. So the fully funded amount for painting is $714. Uh, if you had $714 in your bank account assigned to painting, you would be 100% funded. Another way you could do it uh, is equals, open that parenthesis up. Your age is just gonna be your, uh, we'll do a second parenthesis, it's gonna be your useful life minus remaining life. You can close that and then divide that again by the useful life. Now both those parentheses are closed and here we're gonna multiply it by the current cost. Okay, hit enter and there it is. And then you can take this and wait for that little arrow to turn black, click and drag it down to the other two. And it just, it just keeps, that, keeps that formula going there. Okay, so we'll auto sum these equals sum, select all of those, enter. So our fully funded amount is 42,180. Uh, so let's assume that this association has $30,000 in the bank. Okay, to find out what their percent funding is, you're going to take their current costs divided by the fully funded, I'm sorry, not current cost, their current balance, divided by the fully funded amount. Okay, we don't want that in dollar sign. That doesn't make sense. We're gonna click percentage, and this association is 71% funded. Okay, so how do we know what the future cost will be? We know that we are 71% funded. We know uh, what that 100% funding would be but we don't know what the future cost will be. And the only way to really get that is to use the inflation rate. So we're gonna take the current cost with the remaining life and 
add inflation, six years worth of inflation, let's say for painting, in order to find out what that 5,000 will actually be six years from now. There's two ways to do that um, in Excel. One is to take this future, future value formula and put it into an Excel equation here, which is one plus the rate of inflation times the power of the remaining life, but then multiply it again by the current value. So let's use that future value formula. We're going to say equals that parenthesis one plus 2.5 percent. Close that, and then to use the power, it's shift six. That little arrow up, which is the remaining life, and then multiplied by the current value, 5,000 equals. So the future cost of painting six years from now will be 5,000 and let's say 800 dollars. Okay, and because we the inflation rate is 2.5, that's going to remain constant for all of these. And then since we selected cells, we didn't just type in six, we hit F5, and we didn't type in 5,000, we did D5. Okay, so since we did that, we can drag that formula. So get our, get your X to be black, drag that down, and it automatically does it. Okay, in 22 years, that hundred thousand dollar asphalt overlay will be $172,000, okay? And there's another way to do this. There's another formula. This is a financial formula that's kind of built into Excel. And a lot of times we use it for, if you wanted to see how much uh, your bond, let's say your financial bond is going to be, or your how much money you'll have when, uh, when your bank CD matures, you can use this future value. And we will use it. We're going to change some of the names around a little bit. Here it is kind of explained how we do it. We're going to change those around to work for us in reserve studies, but we'll do it again right next to it. So we're going to say equals future value, okay, and it kind of pops up. Open that parentheses, and, and Excel prompts you on how to make that formula work. So the first one it's asking for is the rate. So we're going to hit 2.5%, comma, and you can see it bolds the next one, which is number of periods. And for us, the number of periods is going to be the remaining life. So we're just going to select remaining life. Okay. Payment. Again, the payment is going to be zero because we're not paying towards it. This is where that difference between the financial formula and making it work for a reserve study comes in. We're not putting money into a painting cost like you would putting interest into a certificate of deposit or a CD at a bank. So for this equation, it's going to be zero. And PV is present value. So the present value of this asset or, or this component is going to be 5,000. Okay. And we're not going to use type. We're just going to close that up. And we're going to change that to a negative. So the, the way the financial model says is you're going to put that D5 as a negative number because it's gone from you. You've already deposited it into the CD, so it's going to be gone from you. You've already spent that, if you will. So it's a negative number. And now our number is back to positive. Okay. And we're just going to drag that down. And you can see all the numbers match perfectly, whether you spell out the, the equation here, like like we did, or you use the financial model uh, and kind of manipulate it to work for, for reserve studies. Both ways work just fine. There you have it. This was the fully funded reserves and future cost tutorial by California Builder Services. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thanks again. Bye-bye.